Here we're going to show you what to expect from a SCI, Security Camera Zinc PoE camera system. I've got a long roll of cable here. It's about 650 feet of Cat5e solid copper. This is UL listed wire. You can always read the rating on your wire. It'll say something like UL listed or ETL listed. And then it'll say if it's CMR category, if it's category 5E, et cetera. So this is a 24 gauge Cat5e. That's the definition. A good Cat5e is 24 gauge. And this one is UL listed, meaning it is full copper. So for long PoE system runs, you want to use a wire like this. And I've got here a few cameras laid out with a security camera zinc NVR. This is an eight channel NVR, comes with a little power brick adapter to power the NVR. Pardon the appearance, this is a professional system. So we've got a lot of stuff going on in our testing desk to show you. We had to do a real setup to demonstrate what to expect. I have three cameras connected with a straight short ethernet cable here, this is simulating let's say a hundred foot run. So I've got two infrared turret cameras that are five and 4K and another 4K active deterrence turret PoE camera. They're all from Security Cameras Inc. They're plug and play. You plug them into the back of the NVR and video pops up in a few minutes. So you can see me moving in there, waving my hand. It's pretty synchronous. Now, the reason we're making this video is to show how to enable the extended PoE distance and to demonstrate that yes, in fact, without needing additional hardware, you can use these NVRs uh, from SCI or Security Cameras Inc. to power extended uh, long runs of uh, the SCI cameras that are fixed lens cameras. So I've got that 650 foot run plugged into one side to this camera here and the other side of that ethernet cable is plugged in to the back of the NVR and to the PoE ports. Here's a picture of what that PoE ports looks like. On the back of the NVR this one has eight PoE ports built into uh, the side of the NVR and then there's one uh, separate LAN cable. This one goes to your internet. I've got my monitor connected to see what's going on in the video. Now, this channel is plugged into channel two and I see no camera. So I'm gonna go under settings in the menu on the bottom left and just, you can follow, I'm using my mouse that's connected directly to the NVR. On the NVR itself, I'm going to go and use my mouse to access the main menu. Scroll down to the bottom left hand side and click on setup. So I clicked on the main menu and then setup. Put in the password, this is the default password, which is a backward C. Go to channel. In my case, I have the long run on channel two. I want to turn this to extended PoE. The way to do that is you can turn everything to extended PoE by clicking on this carrot drop down and select ePoE. Now press OK, and then it'll say mode is ePoE for all of your connections. And then you'll just wait for the NVR to connect to your camera. You can go into PoE power, this menu on top, to monitor what's happening. This tells you a readout of the power output from the internal PoE switch on the NVR. It tells me separate wattage outputs for each channel. It tells me how much power is actually being consumed and how much is remaining. So the total capacity of this particular eight channel is 59 watts, and it's using only 13.8 watts right now, and I have a huge surplus. It should be okay. As long as you don't have too many extended PoE runs on one particular NVR, you're fine. You shouldn't use motorized zoom cameras, not too many of them. And PTZ cameras are not supported for extended PoE runs either. You should stick with fixed lens cameras like the turret cameras I showed you, or use uh, motorized zoom uh, cameras that don't have a high power input. So now in my um, channel list, it automatically populated the camera list change to 10.10.2.2. Uh, .10 and now if I right click out, I can see my camera. I can wave my hand in front of it. This is the camera that was missing before. So it's a pretty easy plug and play process. All you need to do is go to menu setup, go to channel, click on the carrot, change everything to EPOE and you wait a few minutes and it will change. You can inspect the PoE power output to see if your cameras are receiving power and how much. Now, if you wanna do some cleaning here, I know which channels don't need EPOE, so I can go in manually and edit them and set them back to regular auto. This is something, just in case, if you're particular about certain settings like this, you wanna do some cleaning, you certainly could, not necessary though.
One thing to note though, is the reason you may want to do this is EPOE does uh, limit network transmission to 10 megabits per second. That's how extended PoE technology works. So if your camera utilizes more than 10 megabits per second, you do not want to put it on EPOE because you will then have to lower its frame rate. For up to eight megapixel cameras, that is not a concern. However, as technology improves and you have higher megapixel cameras, such as 16 megapixel and more coming out in the future, you may want to consider that. At this time in 2025, making this video, that is of no bearing. However, you may want to do this cleaning to just set the ones that don't need EPOE back to auto by pressing the edit button and mode back to auto for those. My channel two remains at EPOE and it's working fine. No frame skipping, nothing like that. I'm waving my hand as you can see, it's a fluid video. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.